Hi guys, I'm Ella. I'm in my third year here at Macquarie, studying a Bachelor of Arts majoring in Education and a Bachelor of Education Primary. Today, we've got Dr. Alex Simpson here with us and we're gonna ask him a few questions about criminology. Thanks so much for being here. No problem. So we're gonna start off with what is criminology? Well, when we think about criminology, we're thinking about the study of crime. That's the most simplest understanding of it. But when we think about crime, we also need to think and align it to how we understand victims and how we understand offenders at the same time. But when we're thinking about these three things, we also need to look at how each of these categories as crime, criminals and victims become existing within a social category. So we're looking at ideas of power, social construction. And we also when we think about criminology, we need to think about it as a rendezvous discipline. So you know, if you're thinking about maybe studying sociology, or if you're thinking about st studying law, or psychology, or politics, all these things overlap with criminology. It kind of sits in the middle of all these disciplines. Awesome, that's so interesting. So what kind of career paths would a criminology degree lead into? Oh, well, first of all, it's my job. If you fancy it, uh, <laughs> keep on studying, get, get your PhD. So it's obviously the academic pathway, but much more kind of, uh, corporate focus, you think about uh, attitudes towards or industries within crime and criminal justice. The criminal justice system is a huge industry in itself. We're thinking about kind of uh, working within courts, working within systems of law. You can align your degree with law and actually practice it as a lawyer. Also thinking of industries around security, intelligence, also policing, but also we need to think about criminology as, as I said before, a study of power. So we can think about kind of community-based interventions, thinking about attitudes towards addiction and towards kind of safe spaces for victims, for various offenders, um, and therefore you think about uh, criminology and working with the community, and that's something which we can also do. Awesome. So to back on to that, what kind of skills would someone learn in a criminology degree, and could you put them into other degrees? Yeah, I, mean, I think the skills are much more important to focus on than your, your career. I mean, I think uh, you can move through the degree and have a degree of flexibility within it, especially within a discipline like criminology that fits in the middle of so many courses. So your career options are still very much open. I'll be thinking much more about the skills you want to learn or which you can learn. And first and foremost is critical thinking. So this is often said, especially on an academic level, but here we're thinking about how we can challenge our understandings of crime, thinking about the constructs, systems of power, which go into creating crime, thinking about crime as perhaps little more than a political labelling process. And then we can start to see and address and evaluate why it is within Australia we have the incarceration or over-incarceration of the Indigenous communities and actually how this community is arguably the most over-incarcerated community in the world. So we can think about it on that level, think about critical thinking and our criminal practices or criminal justice practices, but also thinking about skills such as research, how to kind of collect data, evaluate, data, thinking about essay writings, building and constructing an argument, all these are really important within your workplace. But also within any um, social science, you're thinking about theory as well. And theory, you might think is abstract and not really relevant, but it's really important to help understand and knit together all the practices that take place within the world. So we can only understand current events and start to kind of think about future impacts if we can understand how and why these took place in the past. And theory is really important for kind of helping us give a deeper understanding to these events. So backing on to what skills you would learn, what kind of practical experiences are there in the degree? Would you get work experience or any prac opportunities while you study criminology at Macquarie? Yeah, and this is really important. So we at Macquarie have got the PACE unit, and this is something which you can take uh, within any degree across uh, the Faculty of Arts, but it's really focused as well within uh, criminology. We've got two organisations who come in and help kind of set up team-based learning exercises. These are organisations from um, intelligence and also from cyber security. And what they do is they come on, cam on campus, and they set up exercises and simulations whereby working as a team, normally around 10, you get really kind of industry focused kind of skills based assessments and learning practices, which help transfer your skills which you've been learning in the cl cl classroom and apply them to kind of industry standard, industry expertise, and really kind of help boost your CV and boost your employability, but also boost your kind of interaction with others and different kind of skills and different learning techniques. Cool. So if a student is interested in studying criminology, what could they do that with at Macquarie? Can you put it with any other degrees or is it just criminology on its own? Yeah, so you can align it with a Bachelor of Arts, you can align it with uh, a Bachelor of Social Sciences. I think when you're looking at doubles degrees, one of the most common ones is think about aligning it perhaps with law. Therefore, if you're thinking about practicing in law, but also want to learn a social science at the same time, then this would be a really interesting thing to do it with. But also you can align it with something like information technology, especially if you're interested around cyber, 
cybersecurity, cyber intelligence. This will really kind of align your kind of learning and equip you well, especially with the changing frontiers around us in the social world. That's really interesting. So thank you so much for being with us today. And we're going to start to answer some questions now from you guys. Hi and welcome back to the Security Intelligence and Criminology Studio. My name is Jacqueline, or J like the letter, and I'm in my third year of a double degree of Law and Security Studies. With me this morning is Dr. Rolando Ochoa, and he's going to be answering some of your questions about criminology at Macquarie University. But before we get on to that, would you like to give the students just some background as to what you've done in your career and what your role is at Macquarie University? Yeah, well, thanks. Uh, thanks for the introduction and thanks for doing this um, as students. Hopefully it's a good experience for you guys as well. <laughs> uh, thanks everyone for who's watching or who will watch in the future, I don't know. Um, so yeah, so I'm a lecturer in criminology here at the Department of Security Studies and Criminology. I've been here for about four years now. Wow. So I've been um, yeah, at Macquarie since 2016. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. My, my background is actually in sociology. So I trained as a sociologist. My PhD is in sociology that I did over in the UK. Um, and I came to sort of to the study of crime, uh, sort of in a bit of a roundabout way. It was always, uh, I grew up in Mexico, which as you may or may not know, has a bit of a crime problem. And um, through that, I sort of developed an interest in how to come to potential solutions to all the issues of crime that uh, we have, not just there, but pretty much anywhere. Um, so that's what I've been doing for now about 15 years. Wow. Yeah, I started, um, I started researching uh, indigenous mobilizations and protests and things like that in Mexico. And then from there I moved to sort of an interest on how communities deal with crime, wow. uh, sort of at the community or individual level. And from then I started working on stuff regarding organized crime, um, which I've been doing for a while. I um, just published a book on kidnapping in oh, Mexico. Wow. Yeah, it just came out last year after many years of working yeah. on it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that came out last year and most of the work that I do these days has to do with drug policy. Okay. So for example, looking at the effects of the war on drugs, as yep. we like to call it, um, on policy and also on the sort of society, um, at large. Um, I'm originally from Mexico. I came to Australia about seven years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were originally coming for a couple of years. Right. And now we've just basically, you know, settled here yeah. and all of that. But yeah, so I'm very happy to be here. Yeah, it's really exciting to have you here. If any of you guys have any questions for Dr. Ochoa that you'd like us to answer in today's Q&A session, there is a live chat function off to the side of this video screen and you can put those questions in there and hopefully we'll be able to answer those for you. One of the first questions we've been getting is just what undergraduate degrees does Macquarie offer in mm -hmm. criminology? Uh, so actually criminology is a major, uh, the undergrad level. So there's no bachelor of criminology per se. Um, the good thing about it being a major is that you can mix it up a lot with other disciplines, right? So we get, for example, a lot of students who are doing degrees in the arts, uh, law, for example, psychology, um, or anywhere within the faculty of arts, really, um, who then choose to do a major in criminology. Yeah. Um, so that's at the undergrad level, that's what uh, we are offering at the moment. Or for example, all of our students do a Bachelor in Security Studies mm. with, the, um, with the added uh, major in criminology, which you do throughout, um, throughout the degree as well. Right. Yeah. And for the students who wanted to do postgraduate, mm. what options do they have to do postgraduate criminology at Macquarie? Uh, so there's a number of options. We offer uh, just you know, uh, standalone criminology masters, yeah. right? Uh, we offer double masters now as well, where you can do wow. a masters. As a department, we offer five different programs. Mm -hmm. We offer, you know, uh, criminology, cyber, uh, intelligence, uh, security studies, and counterterrorism. Mm -hmm. And so you can sort of choose two of those, uh, hopefully criminology, uh, one of them, and do a double masters. Yeah. We also just recently um, formed a uh, this kind of elite program where you oh, can yeah. sort of s choose to streamline a an undergrad and a master's into a four year yeah. um, into a four year structure, and that's uh, you know for for a few of our students who have you know really strong profiles, really good grades, 
they can actually, you know, within four years, acquire not just the bachelor's degree, but also mm. a master's degree, which gives them a lot of, uh, com bit of a competitive edge. Yeah. Um, as you guys know, it's, it's tough out there these days, uh, maybe more so than it has been in the past. And so, you know, it's, it's the idea behind this degree is also to give students a way to uh, strengthen their profiles uh, in a shorter period of time as well. Right. Yeah. So we have had some questions from students about the undergraduate degrees that do flow onto master's degrees. Mm -hmm. Do you still have to meet a certain requirement like towards the end of your undergraduate degree to qualify for master's or do you automatically get into it from the beginning of your undergraduate degree? I think you can choose it, as, if I remember correctly, you can choose it from the beginning, but you, you have to have a certain level of performance, I guess, within uh, within the, the degree, yeah. right, to be able to progress properly. No, and obviously, you know, we have a, the network of support in the faculty and in our department to, um, to really give students the support they need to excel, yeah. right? And that's also one of our strengths is that we have a very varied multidisciplinary uh, program um, so that students can have that kind of support yeah. throughout their degree. Yeah. yeah, so you do have the option of doing the postgraduate as well if you did want to go into postgraduate studies, which mm -hmm. is really cool. And for the students asking, what are the job opportunities that you can go into once you've yeah. done a bachelor or a master's of criminology? Um, yeah, what are the options that you could pursue? Uh, so look, the, the options are, are very, very varied. I mean, we have, you know, uh, unfortunately, I guess good for us in a way, uh, but there's always going to be crime, right? There's yeah. always going to be a problem with crime. Um, the current context of COVID, for example, has brought about, and some of the discussions that we're having uh, as academics, for example, tell us that after sort of large economic crises like we're experiencing today, yeah. um, there tends to be an uptake in criminal activity, yeah. right? Unfortunately, and there's many reasons for that, which you can, you know, Learn go that. into when you study yeah. criminology. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. There's always going to be that problem. And as criminologists, we basically are tasked with the big question as to how do we solve this problem? Yeah. Right? How do we solve you know, everything from domestic violence to drug trafficking, to pickpocketing, to white collar crime, mm. uh, you know, corruption uh, in you know, the public sphere um, and all of those things. So the skills that we have as criminologists and that students will learn as criminologists are also uh, very valuable in the workplace these days. Yeah. Right, because there is a demand for it. So, for example, we have um, graduates who have gone on to work, for example, with um, correct, corrective services in New South Wales, for example, right. people who run the prisons. Um, it's, you know, a very sort of exciting field. Mm -hmm. um, we have trained people who go on uh, to be intelligence analysts for different government or even private uh, enterprises, yeah. uh, consultancy firms, for example. Uh, some of our students want to go into the police, for mm -hmm. example, like New South Wales Police or the AFP. Um, so we have a sort of very, very varied marketplace for our graduates. Um, and that's actually a really good thing because yeah. it's not just a narrow uh, market for them, but you can have, you know, become uh, a, a public servant as well. You know, the, the, you know I, I always tell my students, for example, we have an internship program, which we can talk about in a second if you want. Mm. Um, we work sometimes with the Department of Agriculture. Right. right. And they would say, well, why are you working with agriculture? Mm. Right. And, well, the answer is very simple. These guys are in charge of biosecurity. They are in yeah. charge of the water supply. Right. So if, if those guys don't do their job properly and say, you know, some evil elements decided to, you know, do something to the water supply mm. or even, you know, a biosecurity threat. Um, that is the kind of thing that we are also in charge of and that we want to explore and, you know, bring solutions to them, right? So we place interns, for example, we have the internship program, which I can just tell you right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we that. run an internship program throughout the master's degrees, whereby our top students are selected and apply to um, do a, well, it's like a 12 week um, internship with one of our partners, which are with corrective services, for example, uh, some of the consulting firms we've had, like right. uh, I think KPMG did one. Mm -hmm. We have the uh, New South Wales Crime Commission, the, um, I don't remember exactly which ones at the moment. <laughs> I, just okay. forgot, I just got a blank there, but we have about 12 different organizations, both in the remember. private <laughs> and the public sector, um, which uh, take interns for us. That counts as a credit for the unit. 
right? right? So it's like you're doing a unit, but you're doing it uh, sometimes off campus. All of these days, you know, that might not be the case, but you get the credit for that unit. And what you normally do is you do research for these organizations. Uh, you help them with projects that they're running, yeah. right? So depending on where you're, you're placed, you, you will be involved in those things. And actually, which is really, you know, a, a, a thing of pride for us, we have managed to get uh, graduates actually employed after um, being selected for the internship program, have actually right. gotten jobs with um, with their partners that they had. So that's, that's a really great. good thing for us and yeah. makes us feel really, really proud of what we're doing here. Yeah. Um, so that's yet another sort of opportunity for people doing the graduate programs. That's amazing. Okay. And so for the students who are watching now, many of them are currently in year 12. Hmm. And so they, like, I'm sure, would be really excited to hear that Macquarie yeah. has amazing internship opportunities for postgraduate. But do we have anything for our undergraduate studies if mm -hmm. they did a Bachelor of Arts majoring in criminology? Could mm -hmm. they do similar internships or is it different? Uh, so we don't run an internship program for undergrads at the moment. Um, what um, the issue there is just numbers because there's, there's, there's a, a lot, lot of undergrads and not a lot of uh, master's students. So it's kind of easier to channel it that way. And also sometimes the requirements of the internship require a higher level of Learning, so basically, you know, if you haven't started your degree or sort of midway through your degree, yeah. the requirements of the internship would be a little bit above uh, students' skill sets, and we don't want to put them in an uncomfortable position, obviously. Um, there are the PACE units, for example, yeah. which uh, also put, for example, in our case, uh, some students are put in touch with the researchers doing work here at Macquarie, um, so they can do some uh, research assistantships as well. Um, that kind of thing. We as academics are also always, you know, involved in different projects. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we a lot of the time like to bring in students, even just, you know, a, a bit of help when we get a grant and we need a researcher uh, to help us out with some project that we're doing. Um, so, for example, we're uh, in, in, uh, going to apply now with some colleagues here for some grants to research, um, for example, fraud. Right? right. And in that we include, you know, maybe having uh, a few people working with us, helping us do research and that. That's and there will likely be students, right? So that's yeah. uh, something else that we can, uh, that we can do. Yeah. yeah. And so just <laughs> to touch on what Dr. Ochoa said about our PACE unit, that's actually Macquarie's professional and community engagement unit, which every undergraduate degree has. So it does mean that you get the opportunity to work with one of Macquarie's industry partners and do that practical experience that we mentioned beforehand. Of course, with COVID, it depends on you know, where we're going to host those internships and also which organization you choose to go with, how that will actually look. But everyone gets the chance to do that, which is really, really cool. Mm -hmm. We did just have another question come in and I admit I'm partially responsible for this question okay. because I was similar in year 12. I thought mm -hmm. that doing criminology meant that it would be like Brooklyn Nine-Nine or some of my favorite <laughs> TV shows like Criminal Minds or Bones. Yeah. And so a lot of our students are now asking the same question that I asked, which is, yeah. is a life as a criminologist like at Macquarie and, you know, the careers that you've mentioned you go yeah. into, is it the same as what they depict on TV? Uh, yes, yes, of course it is. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in that. Um, I, uh, they call me the Jake Peralta of the department. <laughs> um, so... Um, Unfortunately, no, uh, you know, uh, we, we are um, not as fun, I guess, you know, compared to that. But having said that, um, a lot of the work that we do, and if you, if you, if you uh, start, uh, when you start your training as a criminologist, yeah. and when you talk to our graduates, and when you talk to the people that we placed, um, the work that some people do is really, really exciting. Yeah. Of course, I'm an academic, and so I think my work is exciting. I'm, I'm mm. sure some of you guys watching maybe want to become an academic one day. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's a bit of a, you have to be a, basically a massive geek uh, to do anything like that. Um, but some of the work that they do is super, super, super exciting. I would say even more than anything you watch on TV, right? There's people who work, uh, for example, in intelligence analysis, who are actually trying to gather information on, like, you know, uh, extremist groups, yeah. right? To sort of break up. Uh, potential threats um, to the security of the country. Yeah. Um, we have people uh, again working, trying to analyze data to find out, you know, where the next sort of uh, threat is coming in terms of crime. Um, people who are on the front lines, right, doing that research on the dark web, yeah. right, on you know everything from 
uh, drug selling uh, in the dark web or you know uh, trafficking of Im illicit images for example things like that um, so in a sense it's actually to me it seems uh, and I actually don't watch a lot of crime shows because of that um, except Brooklyn Nine-Nine which I quite like um, because I actually think you know the reality of crime and what we actually do is uh, is can be just as exciting or confronting yeah. uh, as well. I, I did a lot of research, as I said, on kidnapping in Mexico back in my home country, and I found that fascinating, but also, you know, very, uh, at, at times a little bit challenging in yeah. that you're talking to people who have been victimized, you're talking to, to, to people in police forces. And so you, you are actually, in a way, almost uh, doing what you imagine these guys are doing on TV. Yeah. Uh, so I find it a very, very, very exciting field. Yeah, it's really yeah. interesting. We did just have a, a bit more of a technical question come mm -hmm. through. So I'll have to read it out. Sorry, guys, because it's a bit longer. Is the major in criminology predominantly theory or yeah. is the major more about training you to work in the field? Yeah. Um, so it's actually both. Yeah. I think I would answer it's actually both. Um, in order to be able to work in the field, you need to sort of learn the theory, right? Yeah. Now, what we're trying to do um, at the department here is that we're really, our, our goal is to deliver to students the knowledge that they need uh, to excel at whatever it is they choose to do. Right? Yeah. So, so if, if you guys do well, then we've done our job. Right? We've done our job well. It's not just us, obviously. It's a lot to do with the students. But um, what we want, uh, and I, this is something I tell my students all the time, is as far as I, I, I am concerned, I want you guys to have the theoretical knowledge yeah. so that when you see out there what's happening in the world, Right. Well, you're seeing you know, there's drug trafficking or yeah. human trafficking or anything like that. And you ask yourself, well, what can I do about this? Mm -hmm. You have the tools required to answer that question. Yeah. Right. So that when your, you know, your boss uh, at the AFP or in, co in, in Parliament um, tells you, you know what, uh, I need a quick report on what's happening on human trafficking. Mm -hmm. You know where to go. You have the tools to make the brief, to give it to the, the, the politician or, or, your, or whoever is is your boss at the time uh, and do it properly yeah right so it's a bit of a mix of both you can't escape the theory yeah, and sometimes you know theory theory can be a little bit i mean i think there's a misconception i guess that theory is kind of this airy fairy you know just academics like us just kind of you know <laughs> sipping tea and he's talking about these concepts <laughs> that no one really understands um but theory has a very sort of uh big part to play in things yeah, that happen in real life right um, how you define, for example, organized crime. Mm. Right? This is a theoretical debate that we have. What is organized crime, right? There's about hundreds of definitions that you can find uh, in the last hundred years of organized crime. Um, and you know, people would say, why, why are you doing this? What's the value of what is organized crime? Mm. Well, we just go out and fight it and, and do, do the policy stuff, right? Um, and I can give you an example for it yeah, of, of why, that, why that, that, that matters, right? So many years ago, we in Mexico we're having a debate about organized crime what is organized crime how and the government yeah. basically came uh, to the conclusion that they need to pass a law that defined organized crime and what they did was they defined organized crime as um, any crime that was perpetrated by three or more people very right. simple right okay. it's a group of people doing a crime and then they put it in law and they said and therefore and after that the sort of minimum sentencing for organized crime is like 20 25 years yeah. in jail so if you get caught and convicted then you will have to spend a good chunk of time in jail mm. uh, mandatory so um when i was doing some research there i was i think it was anyway long ago i don't want to tell you how old i am um we found the case of these guys um three or four they were of them uh, between the ages of like 18 and 20 so young people um, and these guys had had the great idea to rob a uh, coca-cola delivery like a oh, soft drink wow. delivery truck yeah right you know you have the the trucks delivering to the supermarkets and the shops and the corner stores and so they basically held up the, the truck wow. taking some sodas and whatever cash they had uh, there and the they get caught Right. And because there was four of them, they got charged with organized crime. Right. Right. Yeah. And so by the time I, so the last I heard, these guys were online to spend 25 years in jail for holding up a soda truck. Yeah. Right. 
And I give that example sometimes to my students when we talk about the definitions of these theoretical debates. Yeah. Right? It's like how we define organized crime for those guys is incredibly important because, mm. I mean, for all you know, they're still in jail because that wasn't 20 years ago. They could still be in prison because of a poorly defined concept. Right? Yeah. So those discussions that we have um, in academia and that you'll have, you know, if you mm. do a major in criminology, are important because they have real life implications. They, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I completely agree. <laughs> um, just from the, because I've done a unit in criminology too, and I remember hearing scenarios like that and asking myself, you know, how do I apply the theory that I'm learning right now to a real world situation? And I definitely think the majors in criminology really help you mm. to do exactly that because there are so many situations where we do need criminologists to help us answer these questions. So yeah, I yeah. think the summary you gave was really helpful. <laughs> One more question I had for you. Yeah. What is the difference between forensic psychology and mm. criminology? Yeah. And I know, did you want me to start off with this one? Um, yeah, go for it. Go for sure. It. Yeah. So I do know, um, just because you don't work in the psychology department, just to help you out a little bit, yeah, I do no know worries. that the forensic psychology has a more of a psychology basis and it's asking different questions and it's a different part of science. But did you want to give mm -hmm. just an expansion of what um, you think the difference is? Look, I think I think you just hit the nail on the head right there. I mean, we, there's it's, it's two kind of different but complementary fields. Right. So as criminologists, you, you can work with forensic psychologists. Um, I think you know, police forces regularly employ forensic psychologists and criminologists. So they complement each other, but they're definitely sort of different fields. Yeah. Right. Um, as I understand, forensic psychologists are more, more linked um, to the sort of uh, neuroscience kind of um, uh, aspect of psychology. Mm. Um, and while we do sometimes even bring in some of that knowledge to criminology, there are sort of separate yeah. Uh, fields. Yeah, yeah, so they are two different things. Um, if you had any more questions about that, feel free to check out the psychology area of study because it does help explain the differences. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this morning, but we will be having another conversation later today. If you felt like you had any questions that weren't answered, feel free to put those into the chat function at the bottom left of your screen. You can also head back to Studio Central, which does have um, like other degree area of studies where you could look into what double degree options you could combine with criminology. There's also a competition bar at the top, so feel free to join the competitions too. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you later at 12.30 for our next chat. Enjoy your open day.